Right, welcome back. It's still Business Insights and Plus TV Africa as we dive into the discussion proper with the Naira. It's, it's been undervalued and of course the Forex situation as it is right now. My guest Mukhtar Mohammed is an international finance and economic analyst, stockbroker, CEO, finance, uh, personal uh, finance coach, budget planner and an advocate of finance freedom as well as the CEO of Asher Investment Limited. Many thanks for joining me, Mukta, at Thank least you, in person today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is indeed a pleasure. Let's talk about uh, this Naira issue because uh, there's been so much talk. The CBN governor uh, was in the news not long ago and he said that the, the Naira was undervalued by about 26% or 26.56. While he also said that uh, Bismarck will want it. So, what's this, uh, the true picture? Is the current exchange rate actually artificial? I think it's artificial, and again, it's artificial in the fact that um, we don't. There's no reason why the naira should be exchanging at 1,400 mm. or 1,500. In the official market yesterday, yes. it went as high as 1,400. True. Now, so when you talk about willing buyer, willing seller, then you also need to look at the side that the government is not looking at, mm. which is uh, demand and supply. Yes. Okay. I can be a willing. I can be a willing seller, and demand is high. You don't expect me, I would definitely want to hide because you have two or three people trying to buy mm. my product. So True. that's where the challenge is because we don't have enough liquidity. We don't have enough willing sellers because, yeah. again, the most willing seller we need to have is the government because they seem to be the one that has, uh, have all the effects that comes in True. through crude oil sales and yeah. all that. So they are the ones who, to make sure they make sure that that willing, willing buyer, I mean willing seller, seller is yes. in the area because mm. so that willing buyer will not have to buy from them. So, the, because what you have now is basically um, um, traders trading. And mm. once traders are trading, speculators will come in. Yes. And the only way speculators will make mom, their more money is to mm. drive the price high. Okay. Because they're only just speculating. They're not mm. looking at fundamentals. Mm. It's the same thing that happens in any market. Once there's a demand of, of a product is high, mm. then fundamentals is thrown up, off the wi up the window. So, you need, I think what the government needs to do is to address that Okay. aspect of um, liquidity. Okay, we'll talk about um, speculators and hoarders much later in this conversation, but let's still stay with uh, this under value, uh, Naira, and of course, uh, real and fair value, which people say is higher. So specifically, in your opinion, what is the fair value of the Naira? I think for now, I, I think I, I I'll go what the National Assembly did, 800, and mm. maybe if I want to push it a little, maybe between 800, 850. I okay. don't think that's so much bad, uh, bad for the Naira. So why eight and how did you come um, to that particular? You look when you look at um, um, what we are we are exporting out of the country, mm. and when you look at um, exchange rate by and by other currencies, especially mm. in Africa, exchange to the dollar. Definitely, you need to look at that price. That that is the, the price, and that is why up to this moment, you've seen that the IMF have been silent, the World Bank have been silent. Before mm. now, you hear when we the only talk when the naira is. Overvalued, mm -hmm. but because they know that the naira is undervalued, undervalued yes. nobody is saying anything. Because mm. again, like I said, it's a factor that we have played ourselves into, so we need to play ourselves out of it. We mustn't forget that they were the one that even um, pushed us into doing mm. the, the the floating system, float the naira, float the naira. Mm. And I remember then the World Bank and the IMF promised that they would definitely help in stabilizing our currency if we do the floating. True. But up to this moment, we've not seen anything from them. So sometimes when you see this price going up, when I saw the exchange rate at one four in official, one mm. five in the parallel market, I was beginning to get scared that hope we won't get to how the war bank, the IMF pushed Nigeria into structural adjustment programs. Mm. Up. I in the and 80s, up to yes. this moment, whatever is playing out was, was as a result mm. of that policy. Okay, fine. I still okay. I still need to understand this whole undervaluation before we talk about some um, FX abuse and all of that. You know, who benefits from this undervaluation as it is? Who benefit from undervaluation? The mm. speculators. Okay. Because they are the one that are now uh, in the most getting more gain from the undervalued nature of the naira. Okay. But the the the, the end user, which mm. is the man that is to pay school fees. Yeah. The man that is supposed to buy product outside the shop of this country yeah. is the one that is already feeling the overvalued nature of the naira. Mm. But those that are speculators and traders are the ones benefiting from it because they are now trading the naira at a high price beyond its, um, its normal price. So it's mm. the traders that are gaining. Mm. 
Okay, there's been um, a call for the framework of um, to stop um, this FX abuse because uh, in your, uh, and s some people are saying that um, this uh, FX actually being abused because sometimes you find that the people even pay with FX yeah, in Nigeria when they should be paying with a local currency. So what do you really think about the abuse of the FX in the country? I think that is the government thing because mm. some of the government officials can't say they are not aware of it. Mm. Uh, up to this moment, some universities in Nigeria, private university, wants to collect dollars. Mm. Some, some even I mean, schools, private schools in Nigeria still ask for dollars. And also, especially most corporate is even the, the two major, um, I mean, the, the, those that want uh, the visa agents, most yes. some of these uh, embassies, they still ask for, for pounds. Mm. Uh, a session of the American embassy that still takes Naira. Mm. All other embassies now takes dollars, mm. and nobody's talking, saying anything ab ab about so it. Ordinarily, is it the right thing? When it's we not the right thing. It's not the right, that's not a medium of exchange yet. Mm, okay. The airlines also are now charging you. They give you two rates. Mm. They give you the Naira rate and they give you the dollar rate. And yes. the pressure you are seeing now is that sometimes when you look at the Naira rate, by and by the dollar rate, you are forced to source for the dollar because mm. it's more cheaper okay. to pay in dollar than to pay in Naira. So mm. I think that has to do with our own system. We've not been able to just mm. decide. That, that has to do with the physical side, coming up with saying, look, this country medium of exchange is naira yeah. you have to collect naira all right okay fine let's talk about uh, you know how we can actually shore up um, our forex so that uh, we'll not be having issues with um uh, supply you know besides uh, increasing uh, crude oil production and embracing the non-oil sector what other strategies can we actually use to grow the naira and of course also have um, enough um, forex the number one strategy we need to use is mm. using our tax to grow our economy Okay. So you need to attract the big players into the economy of Nigeria. Give them tax holiday. They come in with this effort. So remember that you're just giving them tax holiday. Mm -hmm. you, they, they, whoever they employ will still have to pay taxes. Yes, they will. Yeah. So it's a win-win system. Maybe tax holidays for two to three years. After that, they will pay taxes. And they would have end up not only bringing in the effects that will stabilize your rate. That's what we call foreign direct investors. True. Unfortunately, those investors are non-existent assistance since the administration of President Mohamed Buhari. Mm. At the time he came up, foreign investors were almost like between 75%. But at the time he was going, mm. before the advance of Bola Tinubu, foreign investors were just 5%. And now they keep, keep drawing. So how do we attract effects? We have said it, the non-oil sector through agriculture, which is not much. The much we get is from crude oil sector. Mm. The next one we get is from portfolio investors. And I mean foreign direct investors, then portfolio investors now. Yeah. Portfolio investors came into the market, the equity market, they've made their profit, yes. but the two-way Asian system is not there for them to repatriate their funds back. Mm -hmm. So no, most portfolio investors are not coming back to Nigeria. So you have uh, the data released by the, uh, by the Nigeria N the NGS, the Nigerian Exchange Group, yeah. um, two weeks ago shows that Nigerian investors that play in the market is over 95%. And this is 15 years low in terms of attracting foreign direct investors yes, were in the yes. 15 years low. So yeah. that, that area is not there. That portfolio investors are not there. Yeah. Foreign direct investors, I say they are not there. Yeah. Then Nigeria in the diaspora, at a point like four years ago before the advent of COVID, Nigeria in the diaspora alone accounted what they brought into the economy in terms of efforts was yeah. higher than the sales of crude oil that we made. And oh, that was wow. able to stabilize it. Yeah. Now, Nigeria in the diaspora, one, they are just coming out from COVID. Some, there's no remittance again. And sometimes now, when they have to remit, they don't remit through the bank because of that gap between mm -hmm. the, the yeah. official and, and the, the and the parallel market. market. So they have every other. They have a different app of people that can now. They are using technology app to just change through those app. Those money don't find themselves back to Nigeria. What find themselves into Nigeria is Naira, Naira. and that also is one of the things that the CBN is driving inflation. You know, the IMF mm -hmm. say we have so much Naira in circulation. Mm -hmm. That is what is driving because the liquidity is high. So. Um, what those are areas they need to do. Bring in those tax holidays, you attract those investors. Mm. Nigeria the diaspora, you've created the, before the, ex, um, the former government of CBM made the five naira for every, mm. I think for every dollar you bring, you get five naira. Sure. I mean, that's all, all to attract them. Yeah. But even now, the banks are saying if you have an exchange above, at about $10,000, mm. you have to pay like about, I think, a certain percentage. That is not attracting them to bring in their effects because yeah, the other point there, they are going to do it for free. So mm -hmm. we need to come up with strategy to attract them. 
that will be free, okay. and then we need to bridge that exchange rate. Mm. If you don't bridge that exchange rate, yeah. if you don't bridge that exchange rate, Nigerian diaspora will not bring in mm. remittance. If you don't stabilize the exchange rate, foreign direct investors will not come in, foreign portfolio will not come in, and then you still be struggling to meet up um, 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 liquidity issues. Okay, aside from the place of um, uh, diaspora uh, remittances, uh, you know, other key player or key factors that uh, we, we always see when, when we talk of um, um, FX um, issues is um, the BDC operators, you know. So specifically, if you were to um, advise, uh, what role can they play vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, supporting the C uh, CBN to grow the Naira? You see, I have been an advocate that I think the worst thing that happened to us is the BDCs. Mm. Because um, if you look at, and that's what the former governor said before he, 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 he said that they won't be giving effects. That was a sector that every week, at the point until the advent of COVID, mm. were giving $200 million every week to be, I mean, as a means of uh, giving to low end users. And mm. when you talk about the low end users, it's talking about the person that's traveling, is coming into Nigeria, the person that is going out of Nigeria. Yes. That was what those means to exchange for five thousand dollars, ten thousand mm. dollars. But remember, these both started doing as high as hundred thousand, one fifty thousand yes, dollars, yes. because they now money laundry came up. People mm. sent funds there, so CBN was not able to regulate them. And I think you saw what happened. Now, for me, it's only in Nigeria you have the brew the change on the road. Mm -hmm. So we, if we need to bring them back to the system, then we need to regulate them. We need to treat them like the way you treat the banks because that's how it's done in so, the so What sort of regulation? Because if we have um, the formal system, we have um, the the uh, deposit money banks and all of that, so do we really need BDCs? You need BDCs because, again, in every economy all over the world, there, mm. there are all these means of BDCs. Okay. If you go to United, Alma, United Arab Emirates, they have BDCs. Mm. But the difference between their BDC and what we have here is that these BDC are in the building. You have yeah. to walk in there. You have to show some okay. document that you want to mm. collect these effects. That is one. Yeah. And secondly, some of these BDCs are owned by the major banks. All right. So there's an arm of banking also. Okay. So that is where I keep saying that. Why has the CBN not been able to mandate banks? Some of these banks have a lot of offshore effects yeah. to bring into this country to create a competitive market with the bureau of the change. Now, yeah. what happened is that immediately you suspended the bureau of the change. Mm. You did not create another market for those people that used to assess the bureau of the change okay. to begin to assess. And that is why the demand right. on the bureau of the change goes high. And mm. then that's what is driving the price high. We need to create that market for the people that, so somebody that want $1,000, yeah. one that want $5,000, someone that want $10,000. Most of the people that are tra trading the autonomous mm. uh, uh, foreign exchange market are end, high end users that are mm. looking for hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, mm. 50 million dollars, 30 million dollars, 1 million dollars. You, you, the small end users now become more that are attracting to the Burundi change area. Mm. And that is what is driving that price. All Demand right. is there, supply is not there. Okay, let's still talk, uh, although we mentioned it in passing, we talked about speculators in as much some people would say that, uh, in as much as some people would say that speculators, are, they're just actually doing business, that businessmen as it is. But how uh, uh, do we handle that? How should the government be addressing these issues of um, speculators and hoarders who are piling more pressure on the Naira? So as you're answering that, uh, as we close, uh, so uh, the current administration has actually introduced several measures to show up on the value of the Naira, and there are several accolades to that. But uh, what would your assessment be uh, just to uh, take those two back to back? Okay, let me take the last one. I think mm. the, the assessment, they, 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 they've tried, they are trying to, one mm. of those things is trying to do is to pay off the backlog. Yes. And yeah. I can tell you, if they are able to achieve that, that mm. will stabilize the currency. Mm. But when you say what they've done is just a drop, <laughs> oh, because you're looking at, uh, uh, um, bank, the banking space alone, they are owing them about mm -hmm. about um, nine billion dollars, and they have only been able to give them about two thousand two million two hmm. billion dollars. So a it's short far cry of what they want. So sure. until you do that, then you are you pour in a lot of liquidity. Even the mm -hmm. airline companies, they've given them about almost like four hundred million dollars. If okay. you are trying to add up what the previous administration of the management of CBN and the current have given to them, yes. but they, again, it's still a far cry because they are now saying that by the day this keeps. Mm. Um, increasing, but that's a topic for another day because right. most of these airline companies are no more collecting naira, mm. and you collect dollar, and now you are now filing to collect to collect dollars from mm. the CBN. I think that is one area the CBN. That's why that's they are, I'm happy that they say verify effects. So they need to verify really mm. if 
really you been collecting naira from Nigerians. Right. That is one. Then when you talk about the speculators, the speculators and holders, look, they are part of the of the, of, of the financial market. Any mm. part in the world, you have speculators, you have holders. Mm. They are part of the market. The only way you can deal with them is to to make sure that you have a better product than them. Mm. In this case, you flood the market with liquidity. They will be forced to play by your own game. So okay. there's no other way addressing speculators and holders than to to you also come up with a better strategy. Mm. That's why there's a saying that. For speculators, we get their fingers burnt in the long run. <laughs> yes. But that all, all it's always ultimately demand on liquidity, demand on supply. So right. if speculators are striving nice because of the demand, mm. if they are going to get their fingers burnt, when, when demand goes down, mm. they are forced to pay, to all sell right. it at, at a giveaway price. Thank you so much, uh, Mokta. That's as much as we can take on the show today. We do appreciate um, the wonderful um, uh, insight that you have brought to this um, Forex issue because I can imagine, you know, you know, Forex, uh, the dollar exchanging for about um, 140 naira. That's just so, 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 so high. It's 1,400. <sighs> That's just uh, wonderful. Many thanks once again, uh, Mukta. Thank you for having me. All right. And that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin, Academia Business Insights. will return to your screen same time uh, once again. Uh, thanks for being a part of the show. Bye for now.